course. Okay, let me let me put this in my, my pocket. My, my maiden name is Di Benedetto. So. Oh, I love it. <laughs> Hi, I'm here with uh, Joe, jo Carducci. Joe Carducci of, uh, of, of Gresh uh, Guitars, and he's here to tell us about um, George Harrison and his love of the guitar, and uh, well, here you go. Holy smokes, the Beatles, <laughs> what can you say? You know, you know, for, you know, I'm sure everybody in this room could, uh, that's a guitar player, there was that defining moment where they go... I want to learn how to do that. You know, for me, it was February 9th, 1964. I was nine years old, and uh, it certainly polarized me. And you know, I, after I saw that, you know, you couldn't rewind it. You couldn't go buy the DVD. It was poof. It was just magic. And uh, um, I begged my parents for a guitar. Finally, got one. And uh, um, even before I got one, uh, again at nine years old. Uh, uh, you know, back in the old days at the grocery store, it was either paper or plastic. Back then, it was just paper. I remember getting, a, I wanted a guitar so bad. Remember, I was nine years old. I wanted a guitar so bad, that I cut a paper bag open, and with a crayon, drew what I could remember of the guy that stood in the center. And who we know is George Harrison. And it was just that big guitar, and it was just burned in my brain. Like I said, you couldn't rewind it. And there was no really imagery, even I was where I grew up anyway. And so um, coming full circle now and being involved with Gretsch Guitars, uh, you know, we wanted to uh, pay tribute to George Harrison. Uh, we struck up, struck up a relationship with the uh, Harrison family. And uh, um, the, 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 uh, of course, the Cavern Club days. Well, you know, we, let me back up one, one step here. Because, of course, we had discussions about you know, which guitar should we use? To me, it was the country gentleman that he played on the Ed Sullivan show. We had learned from the family that that guitar doesn't exist anymore. It either you know, it got damaged, it disappeared somehow, but it physically doesn't exist. And, and, and to maintain the integrity of George Harrison and the family, we wanted to make sure that uh, we wanted to honor it in the best way possible. We didn't want to just take our current country gentleman and put George Harrison's name on it. That's, you know, that's not very respectful. But we learned that that black duo jet that George played during the Cavern Club days, which is very well documented, and of course during the Hamburg days, the family still owned that guitar. Uh, it, 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 the, it, the photos that we have of George playing that duo jet, according, you know, Danny Harrison, who runs the estate, says, yeah, we keep that in our office in London, and if somebody puts me on hold, I'll grab it, and I'd love to play it, and we still have it. We bought a first-class round-trip ticket just for the guitar to bring it to the United States so we could uh, examine the guitar up close, and, um, and to, you know, without... You know, we wanted to really figure out to crack the code what was the makeup of the guitar. To really figure that out, you'd have to saw it in half. So that we weren't about to do. We took it to a medical clinic and uh, I had it CAT scanned. So it was three dimensional. We could see the layers of wood and how it was put together. Uh, and of course we have technical guys that measure the impedance of the pickups and just studied the guitar, the neck grip, the shape of it, and re-replicated the guitar with every nick and ding as it exists today. And uh, um, it was quite an honor to hold that guitar as I shared the story, you were my, you know, I shared the story how my journey began with the guitar, and so it was quite moving for me to know that George played that guitar on the very first Beatles album, the Meet the Beatles. So are you, I want to hold your hand, you know, all those big hit songs. He played that guitar, and uh, and you know, here I'm strumming on it with my dopey licks, <laughs> and knowing that those those famous songs were played on that guitar. And uh, we, we, we introduced it, it's been about five years now, and it's still a big seller for us uh, around globally around the world. Of course, the Beatles are global, and, uh, uh, and we're so honored and happy to be a, associated with the Harrison family and to bring that guitar to market. Now, up until that point, uh, the guitar was a, somewhat of a mystery. The family had a recording of George talking specifically about that guitar. As he said in his own words, it was his first guitar, his first good, real guitar. And uh, so he, it meant a whole lot to him. When he bought it, he was only 17 years old. And so the recording he talks about 
uh, you know, I, I, I bought it, uh, I saw an ad in the paper, and we bought it, I bought it from a sailor. And then that's, and it kind of, the story kind of ends there. And so when I met up with the Harrisons, uh, I wanted to know everything possible about the guitar. So I, 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 I asked the question, do you know where he bought the guitar from? And she goes, you know, I, he told me one day, and she called one of the office people in and said, hey, go look in this file. I think this guy, guy's name is written down on a piece of paper. 30 minutes later, they hand me a piece of paper with a guy's name on it. His name was Ivan Hayward. Ivan Hayward, with the power of the internet, I found him. He was still alive, and uh, we arranged for a, 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 tel a telephone interview with him, and a sweet old guy, I mean, he's an old guy now, right? <coughs> I said, I wanted to know everything about it. How did, how did you guys meet? Do you still have the newspaper that you placed the ad for? And he goes, I, I didn't have any money back then. I didn't have any money to place an ad. He was a guitarist in Liverpool that, of course, uh, his day job, if you will, he was a cook on a merchant ship that was stationed out of Liverpool. That his, Their route was from Liverpool to New York, you know, drop off goods, pick up goods, go back to Liverpool. And uh, he was a guitar player. While he was in New York in 1957, he bought a brand new Gretsch, the, the Gretsch Duo Jet at Manny's Music. He still had the original receipt for that. And when he brought it over from uh, the United States back to England, like, uh, you know, it, like when you travel even today, you have to sign customs documents. He had the customs document of the guitar to bring it back to England. He still had it. And so, again, I wanted to know everything. So how did you don't have, he said, no, I didn't have any money to place an ad. I go, well, how did he find out about it? He said his bass player in his band was friendly with Stu Sutcliffe, who was the bass player in the Beatles at that time. And it was just word of mouth. And so then that led to the question, so why did you sell the guitar? He was, uh, at that time, he said he was, uh, uh, if I'm not mistaken, he said he was 25. He had just gotten married. And he, in his words, he said, it wasn't like my bride said, listen, this stuff's got to go. He was telling her what a wonderful place New York was. Oh, honey, will you please take me? He gave up the guitar to buy a, 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 a boat ticket for his new bride to take her to, to, uh, to uh, America, to New York City specifically. But he says, my plan though was to go back to Manny's and buy a white falcon, a Gretsch white falcon that they had in the window. So I asked him, I said, did you ever buy that guitar? He says, no. And by the time we got there, I took her to some plays and taxis and hotels. We barely had enough money to uh, get back home again. And when I got back home, because I was still playing music, I just bought some cheapy guitar, which he still owned to this day. And um, so um, uh, when I asked him, okay, so did you go to his house? Did he come to your house? Was it raining? What was he wearing? I mean, I wanted to know everything. He said, no, they, they exchanged phone numbers. George came to his house. George was 17 at the time. What was he wearing, I asked. He says, no, he was dressed all in black. He said he was kind of an odd individual. He was wearing all black. You look at the Cavern Club days, they wore all black. And, uh, and, uh, but it was in the middle of the day. He was still dressed like how they, you know, they would play on stage. So uh, he said they were together for a couple hours. George was, so, I guess, apparently intimidated in that he didn't want to play the guitar. He kept telling him, no, 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 you play it. Okay, so he was playing it until finally uh, George, you know, asked, can I play it? Okay, of course, you know, because they were to strike up a deal. So uh, George played it. So he said about an hour later, he says, I got to have the guitar. And uh, okay, so how much do you want for it? So Ivan says, I want 90 British pounds. In 19, he sold it to him in 1960. In 1960, I went online to figure out, in 1960, 90 British pounds was about $300 in U.S. dollars. That's a lot of money back in 1960. And he tells the story that he goes, yeah, you know, he reached into his pocket. He, like, he didn't know how much money he had. And he, he pulled out a wad of bills like as if it came out of a tip jar. And he had to untangle it to see how much money he had. 
and he only had 70 pounds. So the typical, you know, young guitar player going, come on, I, I'm here now, we're not that far off, please take the 70, I'll take the guitar, I'll be on my way. He's going, no, 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 I want 90, I know I can get 90. So about another hour went by, was, you know, they were showing each other licks and talking about Ivan also played in a band that played a lot of churches that were that were having teen dances where the Beatles used to play. So they were kind of like on the same circuit. So uh, finally, uh, George says, okay, I tell you what, I'll, 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 I'll give you the 70 now and uh, I'll come back and pay you the, the balance of the 20 pounds. Ivan goes, well, okay, but let's write an IOU. He had the IOU, which was written on the customs document. And he, 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 he took a picture of it and sent it to me. By the time, and he said, yeah, you know, uh, uh, he I, you know, wrote the IOU, he signed it. He, he wrote it in his own handwriting. G. Harrison, uh, I O Ivan Hayward, 20 pounds with a British pound sign, G. Harrison. And uh, uh, he left with the guitar, never came back. <laughs> and so, yeah, so when I got back with the Harrison family to say, hey, I found that guy. You know, your husband owes him 20 pounds. And, uh, uh, you know, I, I suggested, Ivan had shared with me that he was coming to New York to, uh, to visit family that Christmas. And uh, um, uh, I, I, I suggested, hey, said, when we introduce the guitar, it'd be great closure to that story. Let's arrange you guys getting together and we'll get a photographer, you write him a check, you know, and she's going, you know, that puts George in a bad light. Let's, I don't want to do that. So the bottom line, what we did is uh, I ended up sell, sending uh, Ivan Hayward the white falcon that he always wanted. That's how we closed and kind of settled that whole thing. And it's, it was an amazing experience. And again, to hold the guitar. And uh, uh, when we finished the prototype one, we, you know, again, we called Danny to come over to take a look at the guitar, and we had made arrangements to have a, you know, a camera to, you know, document his, you know, his viewing the guitar for the first time. And they, at first, they said, "Yeah, okay." And then, while they were on their way, uh, the, the, uh, his guy said, called up and said, "You know what? George is saying." Uh, I'm sorry. Danny said they look so much alike, right? He says, uh, "No, let's not do that because what if?" He says, what if he doesn't like it? And then it's on camera. Well, we, we wanted to respect him. And uh, the, the camera guys were there. And uh, we, the cameras were off. And we go, OK, Danny, there it is. And he opened the case. And the expletives that was coming out of his mouth, it would have been bleeped if we had, you know what I mean? If we wanted to, if we wanted to use it. Oh, it was, it, we missed that moment. So finally, after he was playing, he goes, this is amazing. And he says, yeah, he gave the thumbs up. Let's move forward with this project. And then we rolled camera and he did some talking, which um, if, uh, if you go on YouTube and look for the, uh, uh, the, the making of the George Harrison custom shop guitar, there's a whole story with the interview of Ivan and there's pictures of, the, the, of that document. And, uh, and it kind of tells the whole story in a video form rather than me just telling the story verbally now. But again, what the, what the Beatles and George Harrison meant to me, then coming full circle and being Im involved in that project was, I, I, I can't explain it. It's, it's, it's unbelievable. So Ivan has spent all these years knowing... Yes, but he was proud though. Now people know his name. Now, but did he, not, he never told anybody? Or was well, he, uh, he shared with me that years ago, it was in the local paper, but it never went global. And people that are, uh, uh, perhaps you can confirm as far as your knowledge of that guitar and the story, it was never told, you know? Again, the lore of that guitar was, oh, I bought it from a, uh, an ad in the paper from a sailor. Now we know his name. And now, and now every, every Beatles biographer will know his name. There you go. History. And history, and the story, and the lore of uh, of George Harrison and the Beatles. That's an awesome story. Uh, Thank you so much. You're very welcome. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. Thanks for your patience. Sure, no problem. See ya.